Trigger warning. This episode contains graphic descriptions about suicide, which may be upsetting to some people. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 63. 63. It's never been a it's Sharks player that's been number 63. No, number 63. Well, there is a uh, Barracuda player, Jeffrey Vl. Uh, he's got 63, so hopefully he gets a call up. Sure. And we'll not be able to call his name anyway because we'll be past 63. <laughs> Regardless, uh, we are obviously in interview format right now, and we have uh, Jamie Baker on the show today. We are uh, very excited to get to talking to him. So uh, we're going to jump right into that. Are you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Well, normally we do something kind of funny. Today we're going to do something a little more inspirational. Uh, you know, look at Aaron and I, and if we can do this, you can do anything. Yes, again, we have uh, Jamie Baker on the show. We're uh, so excited. And, not wearing uh, a, not, not, but, you know, not <laughs> yeah. going with the stash. <laughs> not doing right? the I'm stashless. <laughs> I leave it for Curtis and Brownie. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they run with it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're doing the mustaches. We are uh, supporting, obviously, uh, Movember uh, for the month of November. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, raising awareness for uh, men's health issues like uh, prostate cancer and uh, mental uh, mental health, of course. So um, again, very excited to have uh, Jamie here, who's going to be kind of giving us some some uh, insights on that. Go, go ahead. Is that is that am I allowed to? Is that what should I? Yeah, no, go ahead. Up, How about bakes? How about bakes? It's just more. It's, yeah, sure. it's just like yeah, like we're we got, buddies. We got. If bakes we're going to sit show. in a garage like <laughs> Wayne's World, <laughs> and we got a whiteboard that we're like, yeah. I love this setup. By the okay. way, I love the setup. There's a Burnsy backpack, not quite the size of his. Yeah. Mark Smith. <laughs> so I got a funny sm a story about him yeah, being on the good. wall. Yeah, like okay. that's like w my daughter when she was 13 had a poster in her room. Okay. <laughs> and it was a poster of Smitty and when he had green hair. Yeah. And he loved that, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, you're, you're like, I have a, my daughter has a poster in her room of you. He's like, that's awesome. And I'm like, no, actually it's not awesome. <laughs> and she wore number 16 in college. Oh, so, wow. oh yeah, yeah. So th and then it, there he is, there's yeah. Smitty. You're like, and he's on the wall. I'm so, like, it's like. The model citizen. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> right? I love him. Anyway. Nice. Yeah, great dude. Anyway. So awesome. let's go with Bakes. Yeah, Bakes. Right, bakes it's just, it is. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like we're chilling in a garage. It's as chilling. if we're in a garage chilling. Yeah, yeah, right? Sounds good. <laughs> Talking shop. Which is actually exactly what we're doing. So <laughs> That's what we're doing. Good. It's like, yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the men's health stuff. We're doing this at the, be at the beginning of every show that we do in the month of November. Uh, we won't want people to kind of like sift through the episode to find any information. So uh, we're going to come out right off the hop with it. So we wanted to ask you a couple things. Um, yep. One, there's been this huge increase in awareness that we've seen um, between uh, players that are coming out and talking about things. Headstrong, that's coming out soon. Yep. A lot of professional players uh, talking about that stuff. Um, we just kind of wanted to get your impression of the rise of awareness and uh, maybe how you've kind of, I don't want to say spark necessarily, but I mean, a lot of this come out after you came out and said what you said. Well, I'm certainly, it's, it's, I, I didn't spark the other guys. I mean, everybody's had their stories and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm one of the, one of the guys, one of the athletes, ex-athletes, somebody that's still in, you know, in the media world who's come out and talked about my, you know, my story. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when you see other guys talk about it, it makes it a little bit easier. But there's also, there's something about sports. I mean, so many people, like people follow sports and I'm not saying they idolize the athletes, but they watch them, they go to the games and, and you think of them as so strong, especially hockey players and football players. And that's not a knock on baseball or basketball or any other sports, even soccer. There's so many concussions in soccer. Mm -hmm. But when you see athletes, you, you sometimes you forget that they're humans and they have the same, like, we have the same, we have good things happen and we have bad things happen in our lives. Our highs are a little bit higher and our lows can be a little bit lower mm -hmm. in, in, in the world that we live in. So f for me, um, I think it's, we keep talking about the word stigma and I think like we, the stigma has got to go away mm -hmm. and it's almost, I, th I think we're getting closer to the point that we're saying there isn't a, like, we won't be using the word stigma anymore. That'll be good. Nice. When we don't use the word stigma, that there's this stigma. That's like, it's like becoming more common. Yeah. And it's it's real. Like, yeah. it's not just athletes. It's people, People. a lot of people are struggling. It's it, the, the world, everything's moving fast. 
you know, the internet and everything's, you know, the phones and all of this, and, and you see it in high schools, like high, you know, suicides are way up in, mm -hmm. in high schools. Like my, my daughters, both my daughters knew kids that have committed suicide. Like that was wow. nothing, that never happened when I grew up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, um, I think I think it's ultimately now saying, okay, what can we do about it? Right. You know, like if I can come out and talk about it, um, you know, I, I met with somebody. I met with somebody today. I'm meeting with some people Friday, and I'm, I, you know, I tell them, listen, I'm not a therapist, and I'm not a psychiatrist, <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell, but I can tell you, you know, I, I hear their story a little bit, but I also will then was like, I can say, this is what I'm doing, right, to try and, you know. Retrain and, my brain. And actually, will. that's that's kind of where we wanted to go with this yep. right away because the the whole point of this is uh, we want to see what we can do um, to help, right? Yep. So, um, what has worked for you so that maybe folks who are watching who are having a rough time? Which, by the way, we'll put that phone number at the bottom of the screen right now uh, while we're doing this. Um, so, what what has worked for you? Maybe somebody who's watching might kind of get some ideas that might might help them. So, the first thing is is basically, you, if, if you're if you're struggling. Find someone that you know. It could be a loved one, a family member, it could be a good friend, somebody that you know that they care about you and say like, I need help. Like that's the first thing you gotta do. That's it. That's the start. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest, that's, that's like, you know, that's. The biggest hurdle. Biggest hurdle yeah. right there is, is just saying I need help. I'm struggling. Because people care, they literally care about each other. But you don't. People don't always know. And 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 then there's the there's there's going to be another side of that. I have to say, like, you, sometimes someone has to go to you and say, "We really think you could. We we want to talk to you. Like, or I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you could use some help. Like, we you know you you're not acting because de when if somebody's in a depressed mode, you know, part of the thing about depression is you don't really like yourself. So it's like, well, when you're in a if, if you're if you're if you're deep in depression you're not you're not seeking help because you hate yourself mm -hmm. so why you're not gonna go oh can you help me like right. myself that's when you need sometimes so there's the two like one is asking for help one is people around you recognizing that something's off that it's been prolonged it's been going on too long and them helping finding a way to help so that's the first step um, and then one then the willingness to get help and for me, it's, you know, a, a healthy way to stabilize your brain is, is the best way I can say it. Don't self-medicate. A healthy way, whatever that is. For me, that's meds. Mm -hmm. I take, I've been on meds now for a couple of years. The only way I've been able to sleep is still meds, Seroquel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the way my brain is. Um, hopefully there's a day I won't need Seroquel to sleep, but we're not there yet and I'm okay with that and I don't care. Like I don't, like literally we played around with the medications and it took time and the psychiatrist said, you know, we got a tinker here and you know, oh, this is too much. Oh, we wean you off, we go here. Oh, we take you this. And then you find the right, you know, basically. The balance. Yeah, the, yeah. the right tonic, if you yeah. will, the right balance. And so now my brain is stabilized. Mm -hmm. So that's the, like, and that's, that's, that's professional help. As, if you can, if you, not everybody can get that, but if you can get that, get, stabilize your brain. That's the first thing. The second thing for me was, you know, and I was going to therapy in that, and this isn't for everybody, um, and not everybody can potentially do it, and I understand that, you know, like there's, you know, but I had to get neurofeedback done. So I'm like repairing some of the damage that was done to my brain. So that was some of the, from some of the, the concussions. Concussions, yeah. So there's no, so there's three things. There's kind of biological issues, you know, that you're born with, then there's environmental, you know, divorces, you you lose money, you lose a job, you know, suddenly a group of friends don't like you. I don't know, something. Mm -hmm. And Every something environmental, yeah. right? Th that leads to stress. Mm -hmm. um, that that affects your anxiety. And then the last one is TBI, traumatic brain injury. So I, you know, I had, I've always had a little ADHD or a lot of ADHD, <laughs> fidgety, I'm talking too much. Um, but the the you know the the concussions in that made things worse that's when i started to change that's in the, in the article in the athletic that katie mm -hmm. string yeah. wrote you know the mom of my kids 
Annie. We're great friends now. She's remarried. Uh, actually lives really close to here. And then she said, this is when you started to change. She said, like, all the time when, when to the kid, you know, it's kind of sad, like, to my kids, my two daughters. You know, they were, like, you know, three and five years old. She's like, Dad's not the same anymore. She used to say it all the time. No, he's not the same. Mm. So I had to go do neurofeedback. And then the last part, and this is the part that, for me, this is my message right now. And this this can be for anybody. Train the brain. So we train, you know, we train our bodies. A lot of people train their bodies to look good. Yeah. We educate our brains to go out and make money. Mm -hmm. But nobody said, well, here's how to go live your life. Here's how to deal with all the adversities, all the stuff that's going to go on. Mm -hmm. And that you're, you, you know, however you're going to, how are you going to handle that all? You know, how do you handle, if you sit in traffic every day, how do you handle it? <laughs> if, it if, if that bogs you down eventually, how are you sleeping? All of this right. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I train my brain every single day. And so I brought, you, can I show yeah, this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, please. All right, yeah. so this is, the book I'm reading right now is Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. It's, it's about ego, it's about being your truth self, it's about being con trying to create consciousness. It's actually Oprah's favorite book. This stuff is, nice. it's like I'm running out of highlighters. It's like, <laughs> you know, like it's so good. Um, awesome. It's a slow read, but I'm trying to do it as, as, so then I understand myself and when I'm conscious and in the present moment, which is kind of, my, that's like mindfulness. But my day starts off every day. This is like, I've been doing this. I'm really proud of this, by the way. Nice. For, you know, when I went away on the leave of absence a couple of years ago, you know, I went back almost into hockey mode and I said, you know what? I don't ever want to go back to this place. I don't want to go back to where I'm 20 feet away from hanging myself mm -hmm. and I've made a noose or 20 feet away from going and turning the car on and I'm, I'm full of sleeping pills yeah. and in the car sitting in the garage, like that close. You know, kind of some irony here that we're doing this in a garage, <laughs> but it's no seriously. Like I was like, don't I don't ever want to go. No, I'm like, I don't want to go back there. Yeah. So I, I put together a plan, and it was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna retrain my brain. I don't care what it, what I have to do. So, it's this has been, you know, a process or a process as we like to call it. <laughs> this is this is a uh, this is like a, a weekly thing. And it has, nice. these are all reminders. These are all different quotes. A lot of it is, comes from Stoic quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, these are like different affirmations and stuff, different quotes down here. And then each day I do four new intentions. So I have an intention for the week. This week it's shift perspective. So this, you know, my, I have my father in town. I got all kinds of stuff going on. I don't want, if, if, if I'm like, oh, this is too much. I'm like, nope, shift your perspective. Like. Today's a busy day. Yeah. I had, last night was a national game. We got a game tomorrow. Like, I'm grateful to be here. Okay. As opposed to saying, oh, I gotta go do that thing. So turn a do, stressful thing into something that's just part of your day. Anything that's happening to me this week, I'm trying to shift anything that could be potentially negative. I'm shifting my perspective and like turning it into gratitude. Okay. I'm grateful to be here with you guys and I am. So thank you. Yeah, so these are like, to, you know, today's, Today's quote is, you have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. That's from Marcus Aurelius. Nice. Um, today, my, my intentions are balance and harmony, kindness to all, empathy. I knew I was meeting with somebody that's struggling, so have some, have, just hear the story and have empathy. Um, you know, even having my dad in town, you know, he's getting older, he's, he's struggled with anxiety, have empathy with him too. Mm -hmm. And then radical acceptance. So just radically accept anything that comes my way today. So these are things that I do. And then I'll, I'll read some of these other things. So I start with this. I have other, all kinds of different notes that I take yeah. in here. So this is kind of like an ongoing journal that I do. This is like a monthly planner and I have all kinds of, po really cool. it's positive, 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 po like feel good intentions all this stuff. So I don't know if the, the folks that are watching can actually see all the work that went into that book, <laughs> but there there's like there's a ton of work that went into yeah, this like, and it's it's very impressive the amount of work yeah. that you're I mean, wow. Yeah, like this is so when I say I'm gonna retrain the brain, I'm not joking around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, it like for me to make the NHL like I trained. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I used to run hills. I was I talked about it on a post game show recently because I was talking about the sharks and I I, I used to run hills until I puked, you know, like literally. Wow. Not every single time, but a lot. Sure. Mm -hmm. And or I'd or or I'd be dizzy 
Like I pushed myself and, and my, the, it, was, it was great for my legs, it was for power, it was to you know, get my heart rate, but it was also, so when I went into a battle situation in the third period, mm -hmm. I was battle tested. Yeah. I'd already like, I'd already been there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like you're teaching, and then and it pushes my. It, I pu so I pushed my training to, you know, to here, and then I, I just keep pushing it, and that's kind of the plate. That was the I made. The, that's why I made the NHL. Yeah, I didn't make it because of all my skill. There were guys that were more skilled. Like I had skill growing up, but when you get to the NHL, now you get all, like everybody's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So you can't lose battles. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't lose battles. So I figured that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So I start my day with. So I'm doing the same thing with my brain. Mm -hmm. So I do this every day. And the thing is, if I miss a day, which is rare, um, but if I miss a day, I, it's like I have a rule, it's all about mindfulness, and it's also about like not, don't, not, don't beat yourself up like I used to, is, is compassion for, have a compassion for self and others, but compassion for self. For you miss a day, just get back at it the next day. Right. So this, this used to be a habit like I changed my habits, now it's a lifestyle. And as my therapist said, the difference between a habit and a lifestyle is a habit is something that you need to do, you need to change, and a lifestyle is something you wanna do. I wanna yeah, do this yeah. every day. Like I look forward to it. Yeah, and then great. like my hot yoga, that's, I'm a yoga guy, hot yoga at core power. <laughs> um, I don't, by the way, I don't get free hot yoga, so <laughs> I can say core power and I pay, so it's all good. So that I start off with that, and then the next thing I do is a gratitude journal. And it, this one is a this one is a gratitude right. journal. Actually, a Sharks fan. I can't remember who it was because my memory's so bad. But let, let me see if I wrote it. The gratitude journal is a gift from longtime Sharks fans Robert Crockett and Bonnie Ross. Thank you for the gratitude journal. Nice. And if you're wondering if I use it, I'm using it. <laughs> so I've been doing a gratitude journal for about two years now. Um, I wow. start off up at the top. It says breathe, relax, notice, choose. So I'm reminding myself that throughout the day to breathe, relax, notice, choose. So I choose, you know, I choose compassion, I choose kindness, I choose gratitude, I choose love. Those are the four I choose. Like it's like, and then out throughout the course of the day, I do these. If I'm driving and there's traffic, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just changes. But it changes my brain, right? Mm, yeah. So it's like working. I'm I'm training, and then I I I write my. Um, I write whatever my intention is for the month. Like this month, it's action for the common good. Last month, feed the brain with goodness. The month before, it was consciousness. So this, and then each week, shift perspective. And then I write down my four intentions. And, and then I just, you know, like, thank you, Lord, for another day. Grateful for an awesome night's sleep in a comfortable bed. You know, grateful for, you know, it's, it's all basic stuff. It's grateful phenomenal. for my breakfast. <laughs> grateful for being on the fin factor. Like seriously, like no, that's like no, it's 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 nothing. I'll put I'm grateful that I have money to fill up my car with gas. And then my brain's not thinking, "Oh, I wish I had that car over there." Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I can do this. Right. You're not I'm worried about the price of the gas anymore. You're just happy that you get nope. in the car and you Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this, huh. I've been doing this for two years. So it's, you know, over the course of the day, you know, like just, just today I was showing, you know, I live in an apartment building here in San Jose and I was showing my dad around it. Mm -hmm. I'm like grateful to just walk around there and show my dad around. Nice. Just spending time with my dad. Yeah. 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 Basic stuff. Yeah. But that's my brain as opposed to, so that's a gratitude that's journal. Awesome. Two years going, um, I'll never stop doing it. I, I, I just don't. See a reason why. You just yeah. have to buy a new, yeah. Bigger just get a new one. Bigger one. <laughs> no, no. These are good. This is a good size to travel with. Yeah. yeah. Second year, I've been reading the Daily Stoic. Um, it's a page a day. It's meditations on wisdom, perseverance, and the art of living. It's. I recommend it. You don't have to do it, but it. When you read it, you're going through it, and you read it for a year. This is my second year reading it, so I get to see. It's kind of funny. Like I get to see like tomorrow, like how to be powerful but it's 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 not about being powerful in business it's about being powerful in how you handle daily situations it's about being a good person mm -hmm. nice. it's all yeah it's really like this stoicism is very interesting ryan holiday is the is the author and uh 
when you read the book, you're like, why isn't this a course? And this should be a course in <laughs> middle school or high school, yeah. or actually middle school and high school. Be and and then so this year I added the Daily Stoic Journal. So th I didn't do that. So this this is a whole nother. There's there's the whole journal. It's morning and evening reflections. And so I do that every every morning and evening. And if I miss an evening, I do the next one the next morning, whatever. But and the morning one is. You know, like here's here's one in September. Can I resist giving in to haters and hating them in return? And and it's asking. It's like that's the question. Wow. And I wrote the answer is yes. And even if it initially arouses a negative emotion or thought, it's then on me to reject that trigger and respond with kindness, or, appro or, or appropriately remove myself from the situation. This comes back to the practice of consciousness recognizing my ego and the ego and others so I that that was my response to that question now that's that's how I started my day do you get a lot of uh, trolls on online like on Twitter and Instagram or anything no just not curious many. no not that I think you would I, I or should I'm just curious I mean, what that life is like you know no I mean in the past a bit if anything now like I'm on of the of the big three because um, I'm not on snapchat mm -hmm. so I got two daughters that are in their twenties. I don't want. Yeah, yeah. I see enough on. It's okay. I see enough on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I had a buddy. I had a buddy here. <laughs> he liked one of my daughters. Like one of my daughters is pursuing acting, and then there's, she wants to also potentially use modeling to make some money, and she posts something like bikini or something, or I don't know. She was in lingerie. And one of my buddies liked it, and I'm like, really? <laughs> you don't like that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, you don't like that online. Yeah, like, no. you can just move on. Next like, you time. can, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't like it. Like, there's some I'm like, really? <laughs> like, Riley, did you really do that? Well, yeah, we're yeah. not on Snapchat, yeah. so no so worries. So, <laughs> I, I, I was off Facebook forever. Uh, I got back on it. And then, but I'm, I don't use it very often. Twitter, I should probably use more, but that's the, the thing is, you post stuff. If people respond, you do, I want to respond back, but then I also, I, I can't get into conversations. I don't have enough time, yeah. Yeah. you know? So, and then I use Instagram mm -hmm. and I get a lot of direct messages. Like I have some right now I need to get back to. And uh, people share their stories or they, they appreciate, you know, my, my mantra is radical gratitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually it's written in here. <laughs> Can I read it? Yeah, yeah please. Ahead, yeah. Radical gratitude means you're going to walk through life being grateful in every situation no matter what. In times of plenty, when times are tight, when times are good, bad, right, wrong, whatever. You can develop an attitude of gratitude by choosing to be grateful in every situation. So it's not easy when things aren't going well, but if you can find things to be grateful when you have a tough day in that, and that's like, your your brain is you're rewiring it like it's not every day is going to be like that mm -hmm. but if you can accept some of the bad days and say hey you know what i'm going to learn something from this this is an opportunity to get better you know like i make mistakes i say or something goes wrong or i have a bad i had a bad day recently mm -hmm. and i texted some some of these guys there's like four of us in a group text and i told them i said i, I had a bad day and i just had a bad night i didn't sleep it was weird. I woke up at three, like three o'clock in the morning. That used to be that was my witching hour for mm -hmm. about fifteen to twenty years, and then I usually wouldn't go back to sleep. If I did, I might sleep an hour or two, um, and that takes a toll. You have to you have to get your sleep, yep. and uh, so I just shared it with these guys, and just by opening up and saying that, and then I dug in a little deeper, and but what I dug in was was gratitude. Mm -hmm. Just find like I'm like, like I'm grateful for my suit that I'm wearing to the game tonight. Yeah. So I'll share a story and then I know we can move on. This is, sure, but this sure, is, yeah. so I'm not going to say the city, it doesn't matter, but we were in a, <laughs> we were in a, uh, in a booth, I was with Randy and broadcast booth up in the press box mm -hmm. and it, it's tight, it was tight and my legs like were right underneath the counter and there was a nail, a little mm. nail came through. So as I moved back, it just created a little hole. So you're like, not happy. Yeah. It's like a suit. It's yeah. like a, you know, I got a Nordstrom rack. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not making. The, I'm not. I'm not like. The guy <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the guys are shopping, but they yeah. get. Yeah. That's, so I go to Nordstrom rack. I'm like a guy from Canada. I'm like, that's good. It's perfect, yeah. right? But it's still like a, you know, a suit that I wear. Yeah. Um, 
and I liked the suit. It was I got it last year, so I got like a little hole in it. I'm like, that sucks. And you, I was like mad at first. You're mm -hmm. allowed to be mad, like, sure. and it's not like you're like, yes, that's <laughs> awesome. That's not the way. It's not. You're like, yeah. I was pissed off. Right. So, but then after a few minutes, the guy tell the guy he comes, put some tape and stuff. Figure, you know, does it. But then I had to go down to go down to the bench to do bench interviews. And while I was walking to the elevators to go down, I said to myself, I'm grateful that I have this suit. There's a lot of people in the world that would love to have this suit mm -hmm. and that can't have it. Mm -hmm. And literally, it was gone. Nice. It was over. I'm, it's getting fixed. I don't that's, know how much it's going to cost me. But, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> but you know what? I, an elevator ride? That's not that long ago. Yeah. Right? I would have been more pissed off a little bit longer than just the elevator so ride. so that's so great. The, so I, I've worked when you say but that's why when I'm like I, I like retrain the brain so that's for me yeah. you know and then mindfulness you know I go to yoga I try and meditate a little bit but I'm just I'm just conscious of it a lot you know I in my phone I track try and track some days what I'm eating but I put in all my intentions in there mm -hmm. so that's so it's constant so it's mm -hmm. a daily thing where I'm like when, I'm not joking around when I said like if people if you're really serious the stuff I do is like you can do this even if you're not struggling with let's say mental health issues but you get fr if you you get frustrated a lot mm -hmm. on it for different reasons you can you can change that but you have to put the work in you know yeah well I mean that, that was a whole lot of really good nuggets of wisdom right there from from Bakes I was like Bakes I yeah Jamie. Bakes. <laughs> too long or no 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 no. it's fine I'm no, saying no, but no. that's great because that's you know anybody who might be tuning in and wants some information on that that's a lot of really good wisdom coming from you for all the things that they can try so yeah, that might thanks. work for them so. I'm gonna be talking more about this will be something I talk more and more about is kind of my yeah and I don't know if there's a shorter way to say it or not. It's just, it's like, I think it's a really serious thing. It is. And it is train yeah. your brain, man. Like, if you mm -hmm. want to, like, that's my, like, radical gratitude and train your brain. And you know what? You just, things that used to bother me, don't. Good. They're not even there. And and when triggers come, I capture, I, you know, I'm, I'm more conscious of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I know how to handle them. And they don't stay for nearly as long. And I they don't come as often as they used to. You know? That's great. Yeah. yeah, so if if you're struggling and uh, you need some help, again, there's the phone number that we put down at the bottom there, but um, hopefully you were able to take some, uh, if not all, of the, uh, the the bits of wisdom there from, from Bakes there uh, to help you along your way. So um, there's there's hope the, and there's help. There's hope. There's, there's I, I'll tell you, if you just share, if you're struggling and you share, you just say to somebody, I need some. I need a little bit of help. That's the, the sliver of hope. Yeah, that's what it was when I uh, when I was at my darkest. And uh, thank God, I thought of my daughters and collapsed on the kitchen floor and started crying because I was literally thirty seconds away from going, the, wow. going in the, into the garage and doing it. And then I probably laid there on the kitchen floor for about twenty minutes, bawling pounding mm -hmm. to the point of a you know just utter just ex exhaustion of every facet every type of exhaustion emotional physical every i mean there's nothing left mm -hmm. pick myself up go lay on the sofa I, I i think i already i don't know i think there's already a pizza there i think i'd picked up a pizza this is when i came home from the the trip from Columbus. Nobody knew, by the way. Mm -hmm. Nobody even knew where I was. I like it was all. I was in such a bad place. Yeah. It was. It was. It was bad. Um, it was like a. You know, when you get that deep into depression, people say, "Call me," and I'm like, "No, that's not how it is." You're like a monster has taken mm -hmm. over. Like you know, you're literally not in control anymore. Yeah. And the monster's telling you you're a bad person. Like you need to leave this earth. That's like what's going on. That's how bad it is. I've been there. It's it's friggin' brutal, man. And I laid there for three days. I, 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 I like, text, like, some of my good friends text. I just tw tw delete, delete, delete. My daughters, my wife, my, my sister, that was it. And day one, just, I was watching Game of Thrones. I'd watch, like, an episode, fall asleep, watch, fall asleep. Day two, day three, three days. Don't brush my teeth. Don't do anything. There's broken glass from pictures. 
I got cut on my hand, there's holes in the wall, and I think I had two pieces of pizza each day, that was it. Never, just went from there to there. And then on the third day, I'd got enough rest, just by, I'd fall asleep watching the episodes, that I went, and this is the sliver of light, this is the sliver of hope, I went and opened my blind that much. And the sun was, and the sun came in. Hmm. And when the sun came in, for whatever reason, that was the beginning of me now, like. On your way. Uh, I, I went and opened the blinds. Yeah. I went and showered, I cleaned up. I called my psychiatrist, I called my therapist. I was in the next day. We changed my meds. And then I've never looked back since then. And, and that was like a sliver of hope. Sliver of light, mm -hmm. literally. And that was... Well, from that sliver, you know, here you are, and you're, you're, yeah. you're enjoying what you're doing uh, on the broadcast team. Yep. And, uh, Love it. Yeah, I mean, we, all the work... We enjoy it, too. Like, yeah. Well, we think you're well that's good. You, have, you yeah. kind of have to say that, because I'm here. Well, well, <laughs> but, <laughs> well there's I'm a reason joking. you yeah, are yeah. here. We wanted no, you on the show. I loved yeah. it. You know what? I got to tell you, like, this organization is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do you know, that the whole thing this week... Amazing Grace, Gray. Yeah. So like Patrick and Heather Hooper, I mean, they were on a leave of absence, paid leave of absence. They're both employees to take care of their daughter. That's, this organization's wow. amazing. I, I know of other employees, yeah. yeah. They take care of Hasso Platner uh, on down, you know, Doug Wilson, Jonathan mm -hmm. Becker, John mm -hmm. Totora. Mm -hmm. They care about you as a person. Awesome, like awesome organization. That's Once. like the stuff that goes on, you know. Mine was a little more public. But you know, it's there's other stuff that's gone on where they they take care of their people. It's great. It's like a family, yeah. That's why more people come back. Yeah, more former players. And ah, that's yeah. that's a big thing that we always ask a lot of our guests, former players, whatever. Uh, they usually stick around. I mean, in Mark Smith's case, he was down in I forget was he in Mexico? Uh, Peru. Peru, Peru, Peru. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and they came back. Yep. Like they left the Bay Area and then they came back after a while, which mm. isn't easy to do either. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it's amazing. We always figure, you know, we talk we thought about it was the this. weather. Well, well, that's but. part of it. <laughs> I'm sure part of it is yeah. the weather, but just the whole organization and, and taking care, kind of taking care of their own, I guess, yep. in a way. Um, I mean, that's, is that why you stuck around? I mean, I uh, stuck around also just the organization and love what I do. You know, I love yeah. being in hockey. Yeah. Uh, you know, I left hockey for a while. I needed to at, at the end of my career, but came back. I mean, I tell people I'm I'm like a two trick monkey, man. I'm <laughs> I've moved so much. I'm good at moving and hockey. So that's like <laughs> well, you're, you're good. <laughs> so at if I leave broadcasting, I'm going to start a moving company. That's <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're pretty good at broadcasting. So, commentary but as well. uh, yeah, I love you know I love working with Ruzi and Honor and mm -hmm. and Hetty. I love this. I love the the system that we've set up. Uh, mm -hmm. The rotation. I think it's good for the fans. I love working with Hetty. It's so funny. Like he's. He's a defenseman. He's really intense, but like, even when we we're on the broadcast, like I love listening to hear what he says. Yeah. Like I'm like waiting for. Him. I'm like, okay, like what's his what's his angle on this one? Nice. You know. So and he's won a Stanley Cup, and there's another guy, the way he's you know had an had an amazing career, mm -hmm. but he works hard. He's always working to to get better. All mm -hmm. all of us are. Yeah. We take it really serious. Well, why don't we do that? Why don't we jump into the the broadcasting side of yeah, it? Then let's do, do you want to go ahead and. Sure. I mean, uh, what's your? Let's start on a typical day of a, a broadcast for a game day, like tomorrow, for example. Tomorrow they're playing Minnesota. Let, can you go through, say, start to finish of your day? To give to by the way, the by game? the way, <laughs> they gave me uh, just so you know, like it's a cheat sheet. They told me some <laughs> stuff, so I knew coming in, so I could bring some. It's like this is like kindergarten show and tell. <laughs> well, a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. So uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's tomorrow I'm on the radio. Tomorrow starts today. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so this is the be this is the beginning of this will be the front. This will be Minnesota. Okay. Okay. So I've started. Got their you know the their lines. Line. So I so yeah. it's just getting first time playing them. I've tracked a little bit of what they're doing. Like yesterday was a national game, mm -hmm. and so there was more preparation. And because my dad's here, I'm I'm usually have a little bit more done. So, but I'm not worried about it. Um, and then the back will be, this will be the Sharks, and these will be stats. So this is what, so your, I start. Is this is your cheat sheet for what? This is my cheat sheet. And okay. I ha like okay. I don't have a good memory, mm -hmm. so like I have to, so there's the prop. First of all, I love my prep. I listen to music, 
and I just I love prepping, mm -hmm. and it takes takes a long time. This is Chicago's, so oh. now this is actually blank because I was this wouldn't have been blank. The only reason this was blank is because I ended up being up in the booth okay. yesterday, and not inside the glass. Mm. So I had this this to use too. I got so you you. more space to spread. So out this your is notes like basically. a well. It what it is is so this is this is Chicago. Mm -hmm. There's some stats. I get a little couple of points about each guy. Uh, some more stats. This is. I don't know if I want to share all the stats here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to know. These are all reminders. So th again, you talk about you know this is like perspective. Be yourself and have fun. Ac mm -hmm. Pursue excellence. Concise. Less is more. Energy project. Be in the moment. Gratitude. Breathe. When I'm inside the glass, I remind myself to capture the emotions, capture the tension, mm. look at the coaches, look at the benches, share that with the audience when mm. I'm inside the glass. So this is like a little cheat sheet down here. Like, yeah. I, and I just do it before the game or yeah. sometimes between periods. Then on the back, shark stuff. These are stats that I tr I keep these all year. Like, you know, sharks two or two or less goals against. Uh, it, when they win or lose the special teams, win or lose the five on five. So I don't use it every game. Mm -hmm. I track it. Um, these are additional stats. Did you create the template? Yeah, I came up. Template took time. Yeah, I got into the when I started doing stuff down at ice level. Mm -hmm. I want. I needed. I, I need everything on in one hand. Yeah. So what I can do is I can go from here. So the uh, the the main yeah. stuff is right here. So a lot of the stuff here would be the stuff that I'm looking for in that game. Mm -hmm. Keys, other things like that. I have them over here. Mm -hmm. Like for the Sharks, I was looking for a strong start, score first, I want their top players to play well, I want them to be hard to play against. Get rid of the words fragile, soft, attitude. Like we want to stop, I don't want to hear those words anymore. You right. know, um, Things I can talk about are some of the stats wise, defensive woes, their streak, they've been very streaky, the first four. Um, and then also like talking about last year, how many guys had career years. Mm -hmm. And then for Chicago, their defensive zone play, which was not very good, which is they didn't do. Uh, their top two lines need to be going and, and their puck management. And then they're also defensive woes. They're also been streaky and then their power play. So those are the, the so I'm like, these are things that I'm gonna pretend, I don't talk necessarily get all of it in, yeah. but these are, so I'm thinking about the game. Same thing tomorrow, like I'm thinking, I haven't necessarily written it down, but I'm thinking about the matchup from both sides. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that'll be, so So that stuff's here, all of this, and then that's the inside. So these are these are all like quotes, whether I got them, talk to players. Mm -hmm. I don't do them, so I write it on the road, but at home, I print it out. I gotcha. So like I talked to Marlo and I said, I took me a lot, I, I only usually ask guys one question. So I'd say like, wh where's what's going on with the team? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, where where, That's where a are you guys? Question. Yeah, yeah. Co <laughs> yeah it's not, this is not the easiest time to be asking guys. A couple <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, the day before the game yeah. against Chicago, you're like, um, you got a minute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I I talked to Eric Carlson. I mm. talked to Timo Meyer, who was really interesting. Mm. Uh, Eric Carlson kind of went on and on. He goes, you lose yourself. You start doubting yourself. You you overthink. Mm -hmm. It's harder to get out of it the longer it goes. Uh, Marlowe said the last two games show the problem. The difference is all about the mindset. So mm -hmm. he was talking about the Winnipeg game and the Vancouver. He goes, just look at those two games. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the problem. Like we can do it, but we got to do it every night. Mm -hmm. And he goes, it's about compete, winning battles, playing the system to a T. So I have all this. I get stuff from the other team. Doesn't I don't use most of it, but. But it's there. If it comes yeah. up, like yeah. I listen to Randy, and then so these are these are reminders for me. So this is again more like keep viewers in hope worry like I did this years ago. So I used to do this before every hockey game when mm -hmm. I played started in college. So you know, it I sounds funny, but like quick quick outs. Listen to Randy. It sounds in interesting. Yeah. Did uh, how much prep did you do as a player? I did this. this. I did this. this. I had a reminder sheet that I would go to. Drew Drew loved it when I first showed him. Yeah, he freaked out because <laughs> he coached me right. Yeah, yeah. So the reminders they were all like communicate. Angle inside out, make good passes, hit the net, shoot with a purpose, finish your checks, penalty kill, communicate, block shots, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. intangibles, communicate. And he, it's like communicate was all over the place. Yeah. You know, like it was all, it was all basic stuff. Mm -hmm. and he's like, literally, he's like, you did this before every game. I'm like, yeah. He goes, 
no wonder why you were so reliable. Like that's <laughs> like you you did. I'm like yeah. Like that's that's what I'm doing with yeah. Right. Like nice. I so before every game, that's what the sharks are like. I was saying at the start of the year, like more simplicity, less precision. Like the precision that comes, you earn that mm-hmm. with like by winning, and you can become more precise and try these. You know a little bit more risky plays when you're running on all cylinders. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta get there first. You gotta play a simple game. Simple games win you hockey games. Yeah. Right? Not turning it over. Yeah. So this <laughs> so li- believe it or not, so when I went to broad th- I did this years ago, but I took it all from our like I was learning from Sean Madison, the producer. So when I took the job to replace well when I first took it with with uh Ruzi, he says be organic. Yeah. So it took time, but he he didn't teach me much. Yeah. He wanted me because he wanted my personality to come out. When I moved to TV, it was actually a more difficult transition than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. And the reason it, I didn't realize it, it's just it was different. And I'd also created habits on the radio that you can't ne- they don't necessarily parlay over to TV. Uh-huh. And I'd done radio for so long, and like first year it didn't it was actually it might as well be crappy because it didn't matter what i did everyone was missing drew <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right that's true so yeah. it, so it, like it, even i could have been great yeah. and they're like he's not great he's not yeah. drew yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so it, so it didn't matter oh. so oh. it's my daughter that's okay can you take that that's the beauty of i got an app yeah. we got like yeah we're not right <laughs> Welcome to the sh- I just had to shift perspective. That's shifting perspective and gratitude. My daughter just called me and I had to turn it off because I'm with these guys. Oh, she's going to watch this tomorrow. I apologize. That you no, I'll call phone. her. I'll call her after. <laughs> uh, so my producer, Sean Madison, I won't ramble on much longer about this, but I said to him at the beginning because I knew my, my personality and after a game, uh, you got to decompress. You want to have a good broadcast. And you're, you're prepping everything. Like like I said, it doesn't start tomorrow. Like I've started today thinking about it. And then tomorrow I'll be doing a lot of this. I'll mm-hmm. go to morning skate and then all afternoon I'm doing this. And I'll get a hot, you know, I'll get a workout in in the afternoon and I'll take a bit of time off. You know, I don't want to be just prepping the whole time and go mm-hmm. right into the game. Yeah. It's too much. So I'll take a bit of a break. But I asked the producer to, I said, if you're going to send me, I, I want constructive criticism. Send me the next day in an email form, please. After 10 a.m. So I don't want to wake up and that be the first thing I see. Yeah. So what the beauty of uh, the email is it's not a dialogue. It's a monologue. And he also was very thoughtful in the way he would write the emails. And so he would send me advice. So I was getting that. I don't get it very much anymore. Mm-hmm. He still he'll still do it. He, it's it's open, but for the first few years, you know, I was he would do that, and I would be like, so now I'm ingesting what he's just basic. It's constru- constructive criticism. Yeah. So one of them was you got to listen to Randy. Like so, Randy's sometimes I might have something I wanted to say, but it didn't necessarily jive with Randy. Just what what where Randy was going. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So it didn't flow very well because of that. Right. Conversation. It, like you might not notice it, but he's a producer. Yeah. Like. You know, if we, it get, we get a little bit of that on the yeah, show. Yeah, I yeah. Think. Especially during our lives and we're we're live like you guys are, right? Yeah. Like it's it's different. So and I, I I'm fine with making mistakes on the air. Like I'm okay. Like it's I know it's not perfect, but so I just remind myself of this stuff, you know? And down like this is it's here. So when I'm at glass level, if I'm if I'm bringing points down, you know, multiple times in a game, mm-hmm. the way I want to bring it in isn't always like inside the glass. So I, you know, on the bench, on ice observation, from down low, at ice level, in the action at ice level, behind the scenes. So I'll use different, so it's just kind of a different reminder when I'm down there, so you're not hearing the same thing. Yeah. So that's, there's a lot of prep. It's put in it's, a lot of time. I don't, we, and even though you don't use it, it's still you're, you're educating yourself, mm-hmm. so you're ready. Yeah, it's amazing. It was, we had Randy on the show uh, last season and he was talking about the amount of prep work and whatnot, but he didn't actually bring everything for us to see it. He he s- said it was notes that you put in, in your book, and that was <laughs> it. He just he just said called it in your book. Right. But you've you've got like like a whole plethora of of different yeah. pieces that you use. And um, I and I listen. Sorry. And I mean no. I pay attention to what those guys. Like it took me a while with Ruzi. Like Ruzi remembers everything, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Whole different ball game up there. Right? Yeah. yeah. And and the way he pronounces things. Oh, yeah. We had a fun <laughs> so, game with him on our show. On so here. so I've I figured out with how those two prepare so that I don't have to, like, 
first couple of years with Ruzi, I'd do all this prep and then he'd say, I'd be like, stop saying all the stuff I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, no, actually, you're going to go change your preparation because I'm not going to say where the guy's from right? Because he's or what college he went to because mm -hmm. Ruzi's got that memorized. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to do that. Right. So I, I went and, but I he wasn't digging into the statistics. So I started diving in through statistics with him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then Randy's, Randy and I, it's a, it's a little bit different on TV. Could you touch on some of the differences between uh, doing TV and radio? Since you started on aside radio and then you jumped yeah, over back. Aside from the differences in personalities with right. Dan Rizanowski and yeah. Randy on. Yeah. <laughs> they are different. Love you guys. Yeah, love they you. are very different. No, I, yeah. I love both, actually. I love, I love both. That's what I love about the job is going back, doing like... I wouldn't want to do it every other game, switching. It's nice to get in. You can get a little rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, radio radio is more free-flowing. It's Ruzi and I. He sets up everything. We have an engineer there, and then there's one other engineer. And you're like, you think about it. Most people are probably in a car, so you gotta, you gotta fill their head. Like mm -hmm. you're, you know what I mean. You gotta create the picture for them yeah. a little bit. So there's that aspect. Um, but you can talk. You can, you can, you can kind of go off off a little bit too. And and one and one of my little tricks that I came up with years and years ago to help paint the picture was I would I the one player or the well there's two of them that are typically stationary for the most part are the goalies mm -hmm. so if you ever if you're listening on the radio and you hear like oh to the left of Jones in the corner I'm putting you in the place of Jones yeah so then you you know where I'm coming from I do it all the time I do it with both goalies. I, so I do that on the radio. I'll Smart. do it the odd time on TV, yeah. but it's I don't need to because you can see it. Mm -hmm. But on the radio, that's helping you reference point. So, yeah, it's your, yeah. you. I, if you if you're the goalie, and it's two left-handed shots, mm -hmm. and it's the guy to Jones's right has the puck, and that's a that's a one timer. Mm -hmm. Now you can see it, right? Yeah. You can visualize it. That's so. That's the stuff I do. Right. On TV, it's a collaborative effort with a lot of people. The producer, there's a director, there's you know audio, and and it's 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 a team. And you, you know like we're here's here's what the open's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know I give them the keys, but then uh, you know our producers, you know, uh, Sean Madison, who's absolutely amazing. Like this guy's one of the best people on earth. I swear to God, he's he's just. He's got all the energy in the world. He's awesome, nice. and he's you just you don't you don't see many people like this guy. Yeah. And he puts the show together, and and then we, you know, we have interaction, and then our jobs on air. But like, we're following what the screen says. You know, that's the bottom line. Is when there's a replay, you know, after a goal, like I can I may I may hit the talk back and say, you know, can we go back? To just inside the Sharks blue line, which this is stuff took me a while to learn how to do and be tighter. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can we get a high wide Sharks inside the blue line? Uh, Vlasic creates a turnover, quick transition, three on two, nice center. I don't even have to say the rest. Yeah, I'm like, just get me where Vlasic creates the turnover. That's all I need. Uh -huh. You know, so that's to the point now. That's where I'll say, I'll say, yeah. If and it doesn't mean so. There's someone back there. They'll do it. Mm -hmm. We may or may not get it, but I'll typically ask for like if the Sharks score it doesn't matter who if Burns shoots and there's a tip you know we're you're going to see that again but then how did we get the puck to Burns how did this person get open right that's so I'll go back to, to that so that's where it's a collaborative effort so there's yeah. there's constant talking with me and the producer mm -hmm. yeah, where like the radio it's just it's Ruzi and I feeding off on each other yeah and I liked uh, one of the breakdowns that they had it was uh, and we talked about this goal previously mm -hmm. as well uh, where Carlson skated the puck from his zone across the blue line and it was like a little four foot pass to Logan pass over to Burns and then the shot pass to Kane who tips it in and that was one of the things it's like okay how did we get there and you go back and you look at oh Eric Carlson didn't get a point on that on that play but he, but he drew he all drew, the heavy lifting he drew he drew the two guys yep. to create the passing lane mm -hmm. exactly and he skated it all the way in from yeah right from his own zone I mean he makes this little four foot pass Sim yep. so simple but mm -hmm. because there's two guys there yeah yeah so and then the, you know what else you know what's good about the radio uh, mm -hmm. this is creepy yeah. Can I say that? Go okay, ahead, yeah. yeah. You don't. Well, you, you're like, what's creepy? We don't know. <laughs> you, you, you don't ask something. You're like, so like, 
in between periods, people go to the bathroom and uh, yeah. we're, we're like, they're listening to us. That's yeah. like weird <laughs> yeah. to me. You know, but I think it's awesome because the they're listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> you just mute the mic or? No, no, no. 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 When no we're, we, no, at, we're at the game in the arena and you go to the bathroom, the radio's on. Oh. Like I'll have friends go to the bathroom. They're like, I was going to the bathroom yeah. and I could hear you and I'm like, that's weird, isn't uh, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I got gotcha. like, That's awesome that it's you listening to me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're going to the bathroom, and you and I'm in. I'm like <laughs> pumping noise into in the bathroom. Head. I'm like, yeah. that's great. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's <funny>. power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice. hey, who gets to do that? Yeah. Hey, do you, do you get to do that for a living? I do. <laughs> Should do that with a bunch of kids. <laughs> this is what you want to do. <laughs> When people are in the bathroom, you're pumping stuff into their head. <laughs> you play it in our bathroom. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're, here we're in a garage. Anyway, yeah, so nice. so they're they're probably they're different mediums. More, mm. more, my appreciation for the entire television broadcast went up when I started doing it. Let's put it that way. And nice. now going back and forth, like if people ask me, do you have a favorite? I probably like TV a little bit better just because I did radio for nine years mm -hmm. and TV is a little more challenging. It's still like there's, there's, and you know, if I'm right there on the ice, like there's, there's just a little more to it. But yeah. if I like it more, it's 5149 because I love going on the radio yeah. and working with Rusey. I love working with, they're both different. And you know, Rusey, because you know, Rusey and I went to the same college, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, he, he, he was what? He was calling play-by-play -play my freshman year. So we go back. And, and that's like, pretty cool. Not a lot of people tease him, and I yeah. tease him. <laughs> and that's a good rapport we have. Yeah, that's great. Come on. <laughs> and then Randy's Randy. Randy's like, you know. You, I, you guys, I'll tell you what, you guys are blessed. <laughs> Is, there's been different color guys, you know, that analysts have come in, and I think Hetty and I do a good job. Like, we love what we do, and we really, as we saw, we work hard at right. it. Like, we really take it extremely serious even even if we want to have we, i want to have fun too right yeah like you want to be informative interesting educational and entertaining those are kind of the you know i want you guys everybody to walk away saying well that was that was fun to watch or that was fun to listen to but we got there's i don't think there's a better uh, there isn't there's no better i don't think there's a better team out there that has the radio and the tv play by play are as good as our guys Nice. They're 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 both amazing. And we're kind of biased, but I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are. They're they're so good. I mean, we listen. I, I've listened to a couple other broadcasts. You know, and they're good. Just, they're good. Some but, are good. Some are not yeah. so but, good. But, but these the, both of these guys are these guys are yeah. two of the greats. Top you know? notch. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, um, you just you mentioned Brett Hedekin, and one of the things that I wanted to bring up and talk about was that alumni game that you guys had uh, along with the uh, women hockey players. Which uh, it was really awesome to watch that game. Now, no offense, but I, I predicted that the women were gonna spank the alumni. <laughs> it didn't happen that way. Well, you, can't, you can't you can't say that. No. The, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, gotta use a different word. Severely beat the alumni, the alumni on the scoreboard. This is, this is one of those situations you <laughs> yeah. have to you have to be very careful. At that, right. Right. That, right. Okay. So that, 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 that busting that your smoke. chops. Right. They're gonna smoke them. They're that's gonna, what I do uh, for a living. I analyze. That. I analyze. I yeah. analyze. You guys. Yeah. That's what I do. I analyze stuff. <laughs> And people say, "Why? Yeah. Why are you being like that?" I'm like, "I analyze. I'm not allowed to analyze the situation." <laughs> we thought the uh, women's team was going to have more goals at the end of the game than the alumni were going to have. Uh, no, you, and by a wide margin. By a wider margin, yeah. It was actually pretty close, though. It's three two. Yeah, it was. My really daughter close game. played against them. Played against Kendall for three years in college. Yeah. My yeah. daughter played college hockey, so I told her, Annie Pankowski. She played with her in um, in prep school mm -hmm. back in Vermont before college and then uh, so I kind of told her but I texted her I said oh this is and this is the team she goes oh so you're going to find out what it's like to lose to them have fun <laughs> that's what she said to me wow <laughs> literally Words that was her text that's my dad well yeah <laughs> elephants don't raise giraffes right okay. so she's like oh you're going to have fun losing to them now you know what it feels like have fun <laughs> later <laughs> that's <laughs> like, awesome <laughs> so she's, she's yeah so I thought we were going to lose by a wider margin but when yeah. I first found out we were doing it I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm like, what happens? Like, what's gonna happen when a bunch of guys that used to play in the NHL are losing? Like, we're getting our butts kicked out there, and like, what's the difference between that and Spanx? Yeah. See, yeah. you didn't say anything. Yeah. You let it go. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you thought it though, didn't you? <laughs> I could feel your energy. You're like, wait a minute. Should I call him out? He called me out. <laughs> I, will, I would never call out a guest on our show. Right? <laughs> so. so I'm like, what's gonna happen if? They get a big lead on us. Yeah, like we're competitive guys. The the 
So I thought it was going to be worse. Um, well, their goal, the goalies were good. Yeah, yeah. and we did like the, the, we lost because of Setaguchi. It's as simple as that. He, wow. he's no, no. We we fully one hundred percent put all the blame on him. He's he's still in his thirties. Like Seto, I, you got to go score some goals. I was gonna say I thought he was the hardest working guy out. There. No offense to you or anyone else, but he was he flying should be. out there. He we was, can't. I don't. I went and skated. I was in Canada a week before. I skated mm-hmm. with my knees. I hadn't skated in a year. Yeah. <laughs> like my brain saying go. My legs aren't going. Yeah. And your hands aren't. <laughs> That's like, the reason like, we thought the women were gonna were gonna. So have did I. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. gonna be worse, but. You know what? We're pretty good positionally. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we know yeah, yeah, yeah. we still have our sticks. Like we were like take, we're like take the inside of the just play inside the dots. Yeah. Let them, they can control the out there. And yeah. they were and we're stronger. And that goes that actually goes back to something we heard uh, when we interviewed Doug Wilson when he said there's two ways to play the game fast. Yeah. You play the game fast with your feet or you play the game fast with your mind. And if you guys have been so well trained, you know, you're talking about training your brain. You guys have been so well trained in the sport of yeah. hockey. To know where to be, that you don't have to have the. We weren't chasing. We weren't like yeah. We weren't. Yeah, you guys weren't chasing. We weren't. Yeah, we weren't yeah. chasing the game. Yeah. So, it was really fun. You know what? They were really good. It was, and and I've been out with my daughter. Like mm-hmm. it's a, I love when I get to skate with my daughters mm-hmm. and pass. Like she, it was so fun, watching these women pass the puck, and and their skill level. Yeah. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. Like it was really like it was an honor to play with them. It's. It meant a lot to me because my daughter went up and played college, yeah. and yeah, she was a pretty good college player. Went to University of Mont- Vermont, but so I didn't. I didn't care, you know. I you don't want to get embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, I think it was. I think it was great. I think it was yeah. great for them too. I thought it was entertaining. I mean, I, yeah, I'm and hoping that they do it again next year. For me, it, Seto looked like he was going out for another contract because he was really moving, <laughs> flying out there. He yeah, looked, he, he looked amazing out there. I mean, to, to shot me. the puck over the net a million times. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hit the net, hit the net, Seto. No, no, we he he was fully responsible because we counted on him at. Just we lost by <laughs> what? If he's if, yeah, he puts a couple of goals in, we yeah. we might win the game. Yeah. So he was yeah. He's, All right. Oh no, we we fully we were there was fingers pointing. <laughs> well, so okay, let's. There was no that. dissension, so it was the, it was pretty much unanimous <laughs> that Seto cost us the game. I was gonna say, apart from Seto, then what was that level of camaraderie? What was that like with all the the X Sharks players, even guys like from your generation, not from your generation, like that level of camaraderie, right? It's like four dudes deciding to do a, a show in a garage. Yeah, what are you guys like <laughs> there you go. It's like it's right. You turn we, into teenagers. We've known yeah. each other since kindergarten. We, yeah, yeah, so far back. We yeah, go. it's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Identical. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're si- men are simple. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether we play in the NHL okay, or not. So we're, you put us in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. Guys are walking around naked and, you know, like Mike Ricci's in there. He chirps everything. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. Like and Doug Murray. You got personnel, you know, Hannon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you got some big heads in there. Yeah. yeah. Literally, literally yeah. and figuratively. We, we told that story off yeah. camera of yeah. uh, Doug Smitty. Murray and, um, Smitty. and Hannon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, dunking so, their heads in water. So. Jumbo, Jumbo came in, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So, Tom, Tom Peterson, his is Tom Peterson, which I which I love. I called him Vlastimil Krupa was yeah. his his okay. partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could I could say this on air. I could say this. Um, TP toilet paper Krupa <laughs> rhymes with poopa. Oh, okay. So I called Krupa poopy pants. <laughs> and, Tom Peterson toilet paper. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just little little. And they were paired back together too. They were they were they were deep pair. Okay. Poopy pants, poopy pants, and toilet paper. <laughs> That's what I called them. Oh, that's, that's awesome. great. No, right? you guys really do revert to teenagers or even farther back than teenagers. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. But okay, so then men aside, uh, Kendall, we just talked a little bit about yep. Kendall, but she's joined the, the broadcast team for uh, a few games here and there. Yep. Um, it, one of the things that you brought up actually was when Jamie, f- or sorry, when Bakes first started doing. You can say Jamie. Well, it's like, too late now. It's too late. I already <laughs> corrected myself. Um, when, when you started, right? So it was kind of difficult for you to kind of pick up and get the flow of everything. Um, is that kind of the same like for, for Kendall right now? Is she she kind of uh, meshing in really seamlessly. Are you guys helping her with? Uh, we're with her we're helping. Like everything? we're helping her. I mean, yeah. she. There's. I, we've only done one game, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, she's she's. I think she's. I think I'm doing one in a week or so. Mm-hmm. I thought she did really well. She doesn't have a lot of reps, and yeah. she knows that. So we're showing her, like we're showing her the preparation we do. You need, and she's not like around the team every time. So it's almost like. 
you kind of get into a bit of a rhythm. Like the first few games of the year, it takes me a little bit to get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we're like, it literally, by, when we get to game 10, I'm like, okay. Like I'll even say to Randy, okay, well, I, I feel like I'm starting to get comfortable. That's like, because we talk about it, yeah. you know? Um, so with Kendall, to me, this is about breaking barriers. This is not like, she doesn't have to become the sportscaster of the year. Like I'm not worried, she and she understands that it's mm -hmm. like she's new to this. Mm -hmm. So just, just, I said, I all I said to her, have fun and just be comfortable. Yeah. You and and with our producer and with Randy, just when there's it's a three minute show, don't don't feel like you have to. Sean's like you don't have to jump in all the time. Mm -hmm. When you want to, when if you have something to say, jump in, and that's it. So it's like bring bring in the ins the insight that you have, what you see, and she, I thought she did a great. She did a great job, and she'll get more comfortable. So, like anything, she's a teammate. <clears throat> she's to me, it's like, it's really important to me because of my daughters, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. like gender, and and having that gender come into our sport and and our sport because she plays too. Mm -hmm. But coming into the NHL, like I really want to help her as much as I can. And I just said, let's just, and that was it. Like, have fun. We're gonna have fun. And it's interesting that that what uh, Rusnowski told you is the same thing that you told her, right? It's just yeah. basically be yourself. Yeah, like you, you make a don't mistake. Don't try to Who be something you're not. Just, yeah, don't, yeah. don't, yeah. I and you know, like last year, I thought it was like it was it was too soon to put her in the playoffs in that when she had no reps. Mm -hmm. Like she, you know, like we'd done, I'd done the radio for years. Had he he did pre and post game shows. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta. Just because you play doesn't mean you can go become a broadcaster. There's right. a, this is also, yeah. there's something to this too. Yeah. It's, you know. It's well, and it's great hearing her perspective on it because yeah. I mean, obviously we have player perspectives, yeah. you know, from behind the, the glass or, you know, anything else. But um, hearing what she has to say about it, it's been, it's kind of been refreshing, like you said, having yeah. women doing uh, that that part of it for the sport, for, for the fans and whatnot. I think there are uh, lots of female fans that are yeah. more receptive to hearing it from her, right? So, and, and she's, Obviously knows the game of hockey. Oh my God, she's her, so competitive. Her it's breakdowns awesome. are pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, she's my daughter. You know. Yeah. Told me like she didn't like playing against her because <laughs> <laughs> she, my daughter, was a good skater. But Kendall nice. was one of the few players that were faster. Yeah. But she said she was mean to play against. Yeah. Like yeah. she's she's a competitive, but so so she analyzes the games right, and yeah. that's why she's great. That's why she's that's why she's Kendall Coyne. Yeah. And she's an awesome person. And uh, she does have a lot on her plate, so you know she's she's doing a lot. She's mm -hmm. kind of overseeing basically the union, the, the for for women's hockey, mm -hmm. and you know she is trying to break barriers. I think it's I think it's awesome, and I love that she's part of the crew. She knew Hetty a little bit from he helped out the women's uh, national team a little bit, but okay. it's, it's been seamless having her on the team. Everybody, when we were first told about it, it was like, great, this is awesome. Yeah, bring yeah. it on. Can't Absolutely. wait. Can't wait to work with her. Well, uh, maybe we can get you to put in a good word uh, for us with her because I would love to have her on the show. I would love okay. to interview Kendall. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I will. You heard it here. Yeah. He said okay. You he can't, said, he's like, yeah, can't strike no it from the record. Yeah. He said okay. I said I put in a good word for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't that's, say she's going to be on the show. Yeah, that's right. all I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, I just want yeah. the good word. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Sharks uh, and the season that they're having right now. And it's been. Really rocky. Um, we started off, you know, in kind of a pretty low, rough spot. Got a couple wins, but then just kind of back down again. Uh, most recently, picked up a win though. So, um, Redeem Shimmick coming back into the fold. Things are kind of looking a little bit up again. Uh, did you want to go ahead and kind of kick this off here? Or? Well, yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, we well from our <laughs> shows, we haven't really been panicked. We're kind of still on paper. The Sharks look really good. We think they're. Um, they they can I I still think they're a playoff team even though now it's going to be tough mm -hmm. I still think they can do it um, we've been talking about it like a lot of people are getting panicked we're not really panicked yet still and mainly because I you saw sound and look panicked do I <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. both of you do but you don't but you're no, no, I, I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> we have a more <laughs> level-headed view I think yeah, than yeah. most yeah. fans do um, and not to that we're complete homers or anything but. Um, I we saw how they played against Winnipeg. Yeah, it was very frustrating that they, they didn't get the win in Winnipeg yeah. or against Winnipeg, um, and I feel like that carried over into the next game where they played. Uh, maybe they play. I even forgot now. Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver. Where it they seemed like um, they were just you know heartbroken that they didn't win a game where they played probably their best game of the season. Um, 
They did play well against Chicago yesterday. I think, you know, Shimmick helped yes. coming in. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say Shimmick is the savior of the team. The Savoir. Right, it, which is what a lot of people are saying. I, it's kind of, I, th I think it's funny, yeah. but um, I, I can't, you also have to admit that they did look pretty good with them back in the lineup, so it's kind of, it's tough to say. But I think what he did do is he helped solidify the defense, spread out the minutes a little bit more, so Burns and Carlson are on the ice for, you know, 28 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to sustain an entire season doing that. So getting them down to about 24, 25 minutes, Shimmick, I think he got close to 20 yesterday. I didn't look, actually. I, didn't, had, I haven't seen that. I think it was a 20. lot. Yeah. It was for a guy who just came back for his first yeah. NHL game since March. I think he's an, I, he's an important piece. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's the missing piece. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not letting the big three off the hook, sorry. Nah. What do you guys, I know you guys have keys. I want to hear your keys, and then because I want to be able to play off them. <laughs> sure. So okay. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's the thing. Because I last night was a national broadcast, so I, you know, like when you do a national broadcast, I'm still with the Sharks, and it was different because we picked up the feed from Chicago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like so we didn't have our normal producer and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a different type of broadcast for us. I was upstairs as opposed to being down, but like we're you're try you have to. You're, it's not instinctual because mm -hmm. I know more about the Sharks. I'm cheering for the Sharks. Yeah. And you have to be neutral, right? Like, it's a national broadcast. That's that's part of the deal. So, you know, I did more work on Chicago than normal. but So I ran some numbers. So I want to hear what you guys kind of think. Sure. And I'm going to share some numbers. I'm going to okay. use numbers to basically... Get your point. Oh, it gets my point. Yeah. <laughs> my okay. point. I'll, it'll get my point across. Okay. And it's not... Uh, I don't know where this is going to go. Okay. I'm just telling you right <laughs> sure, now. Sure, okay. No, I don't. Yeah. I, it's well, like it's... Pete DeBoer said, like, other groups have responded. How's this? Gr I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I've been on good teams, and I've been on bad teams. Yeah. And I've seen this team. They they haven't, they have not proven to me that, they, that they're going to turn this thing around. Really? Not after one game against right. the, Chicago was terrible yeah. last night. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That, and Winnipeg wasn't very good, but that's, so, I'll, like, I want to see them, you know, sustained consistent they, they need a winning streak of five yeah. or six games yeah and then you get you know remember i told you seems like days ago remember i told you i used to run hills yeah yeah, yeah. so i talked about that after a game recently it's a feeling that you can go back to mm -hmm. when i was in a slump i used to go back to i would like between games i'm like what do i need to do to improve i'm like i go back to the hills or like something training wise it was hard. Familiar. That was hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was hard. Really hard. And I'm like, go do that on the ice. Go be that guy. Go be hard, hard, hard to play against. Mm -hmm. The rest will take care of itself. When you're not scoring, go be hard. That was like, be harder. Yeah. Not like, so I, you know, I changed the zones. You know, I didn't worry about the offensive zone. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna be friggin' awesome in these in the neutral zone and the defensive zone. Right. I'm gonna be like a beast. I'm not losing a battle in the defensive zone. Like I used to tell guys, you if, if you if you win another faceoff, I'm coming after you. I'm like, this is if I was struggling scoring, mm -hmm. I'd look them in the eye. Yeah. I'm like, if you win another faceoff against me tonight, I'm coming to get you. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because that's my job. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not scoring, <laughs> I don't score. I gotta win faceoffs, and if you keep doing that, I'm gonna get benched. Yeah, so yeah. I gotta try and hurt you, yeah. <laughs> or I have to get you. I shouldn't say hurt you, but whatever I would say. Yeah, right. yeah. Expletive, expletive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not joking. That's yeah. like yeah. that's that's. And then when you're scoring and you got a balanced attack, it's not that I want to be bad. It's not like oh, I didn't care about faceoffs, but I'm just saying, what do you revert to when you're struggling? Yeah. So. That's what I want to find. This I want to see what this group does. I don't care about one player. I want to see this group. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you guys got? Well, we did three keys on our last episode yeah. on Sunday. Uh, the Are you guys have sponsored keys yet? No, no, work no, on no that. we're not yeah, sponsored. We're we'll, we'll talk to Kendall about that, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> she knows more sponsors than Nice. Than okay, good. <laughs> Actually, well, promises going on. Here. To, be, to be fair, to be fair, we do have one sponsor. If you guys get a core core power becomes a sponsor, I, I'll be I'll be I'll we be actually, hurt. Well, our I'll, sponsor, I'll hurt. our sponsor is La Villa. Yeah. You know it that? is in Willow yeah. Glen. Yeah, you've been there. You know of it. See, Chris. it's where the players go. The Chris is Chris, the Chris is special. Combo. The Chris yeah. combo yeah. and the ravioli. Yeah. yeah, you know. You know what I had today for lunch? 
Chris Combo and Raviolis. The, it's literally the only thing. I, that and their and their the, C- the, C- yeah. the Caesar salad. Yeah, yeah, with pasta in it. Yeah, like, so we'll we'll go. I ahead get those three things every time. We'll go yeah. ahead and say this then for this whole three keys discussion. This segment sure. brought to you by the three key segment brought <laughs> yeah. to you by Love. I've known one. Chris for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Good people, huh? Great people. Great people. Yeah. yeah. Went to, to school with Trisha, actually. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, so That's awesome. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can't eat those raviolis every day. <laughs> so those three keys. Now, you want to go through what, what we said? Briefly. Okay. Let's okay. go yeah. briefly. Briefly. What, what do you got? Okay. Don't chase the game. Which I already did this for earlier in the broadcast. Don't chase the game. Don't okay, the game. so this is, these are my, this is from last night. Mm-hmm. Going into last night, the Sharks had scored the, they'd given up the first goal 11 times. I think it was most in the league, and they were 2-9. and nine. That's chasing the game. Mm-hmm. They were 2-1-1 one, one when they scored first. They're now 3-1-1. One, one. Good job, guys. Thanks. <laughs> you know, our stat that we used was uh, oh. they played over 50% of the time of all of the ice time or hockey time that they played, 50% of the time was behind. Only 24% of the time was tied. You start the game tied. That's how bad the chasing the game was. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, bad. That's good. Which good, was number nice one stat, in yeah. the league. Uh, number two, defense first. And we mean, we don't mean the defenders, we mean team defense. Yeah. Right. Guard the goal. Defensive zone. Th- defensive take care zone. of that. Yeah. So Take care of the defensive zone and it goes So forward. you're saying if you're even strength, high danger goals against is 31st in the league. If you're even strength, five on five goals against is 31st in the league. If your even strength goals for goals against percentage is 31st in the league and your even strength five on five save percentage is 30th in the league, that that's bad? Probably. You won't be winning many games. Check. So (laughs) last year they gave up two or less. So there's there's like Mm -hmm. a sidebar. They gave up two or less goals 32 times. They're 32 0 0. This year they'd only, yesterday was the fourth time. They're 4 0 0. When they give up three or more goals, they're 1 10 1. Right. That's it. Now, like, that's it. Yep. Like, if your mindset is we're giving up one goal tonight, that's it, and you give up two, you're like, ah, oh, man, we gave up twice as many as we 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 said we were going to do. You still the chance of victory. Yeah. That's a mindset. Mm-hmm. And and it's funny because we talked about a quote from Logan Couture last season where he said, you know, it doesn't seem like it, but offense comes from defense. Because you get the pu- the the possession of the puck back in your defensive zone, then you worry about moving the puck up. Don't try to force everything up the ice. Get the puck first. It's a lot easier to win games if you only have to score three goals. Yeah, not four or five. Yeah. So you lose. I'm coming. I come. I come with numbers. Yes. I come with numbers. I. Yes. This is. <laughs> you <laughs> caught me. This was perfect after yeah. a national game. So you lose Pavelski, Donskoy, and Nyquist. Three right wingers. That's a combined 58 goals, 112 points. Mm-hmm. Hurdle. Career years, hurdle, goals and points, Couture points, Meyer goals and points, LeBanc points, Kane goals, and I think on defense, I also think Burns. Mm -hmm. Career years. So you Mm -hmm. lose all those points and you have all those guys have career years. You got to play better defensively. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's like, it's a mindset. Goes back to what Patty Marlowe said. Patty Marlowe said, it's a mindset. He goes, Got to compete, winning battles, playing the system to a T. So, defense so, first. Like, I would say, defense first is is to me is the number one thing. That's the yeah. mindset because then you're not you're not chasing the game. Mm-hmm. Get the other teams to get frustrated. Yeah. And you know what? If you give up the first goal, you're like, okay, that's it. They're not getting any more. You know what I mean? So yeah. then you're not... The chasing the game can go away if the defense first mentality takes a, takes over. Yeah, because one's related to the other, right? So totally. Now, I have a question about the defense first, though. Um, a lot of folks saying, it's yes, we can blame the system in front of them, but the goaltenders need to make a save. Now, I'm not sure, as a former player, looking at the plays that are happening, if you take a look at the goaltending and you say, well, the goalies are just that bad. I have a problem with that because when you look at the, the PK... We're number one PK in the league, so down a man. When we focus on playing team defense, if we make that you know the mentality. The, the goaltending is fine. As soon as you take that mentality away, because you're five on five trying to chase the game and go play offense, all of a sudden the goaltending is not so great. So is it is it the goaltending or is it the defense around the goaltending? Not just the defensemen, but the unit, the whole unit. 
Did you see, like, when you're doing, when someone's doing this, it means they're thinking while they're listening, by the way, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Because I haven't been doing this the whole time. Okay. <laughs> like, why is Jamie doing that? He's thinking. I'm like, I was listening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Here's my answer. I want to find a. I want to find out about the goaltending. I don't want to answer the question. Okay. So I'm not answering a question with a question. Sure. Which you're never supposed to do. Right. But sometimes you do. It's fun to do it every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to answer the goaltending question because I want them to fix a whole bunch of other things first, and then I want to find out about the goaltending. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Going into last night, this ugh, it burns me to do this, but I got to do it. So, because it's too important not to. Mm-hmm. And plus minus is not the end all. Right. But our top three defense and our top three centers going into last night were a combined minus 60. 60. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that was plus 10, if they were a combined plus 10, do you think the, re- the record would be different? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that answers the goaltending mm-hmm. question, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yep. That's, I mean, that, that's that's he forty-one million numbers. dollars. That's half the salary cap. Yep. Defense down the middle, and it's not one guy. It's like, it's you know what I mean. Yeah. Like Logan's called himself out. Hurdles called himself out. You know what I mean. Carlson said he's got to be better. It's it's those six guys are. The core. Every, that's yeah. the core. It's a yeah. unit. You know, like yeah. Meyer plays better when the center plays better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So it's like you got to be good down the middle. Mm-hmm. And you got your top 3D. That's how the team is built now. It, they take up one third of the salary. I mean, you can't, you can't, neg- we can't neglect to talk about that because that affects depth elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Like if those three guys, Vlasic, if, and it's not in any order, it's, uh, we'll go by salary. Carlson, Burns, Vlasic. If those three guys, are playing great hockey. Joe Thornton's going to be playing better because Joe Thornton doesn't have to play 200 foot game. Mm-hmm. He's not going end and 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 he's oh, they break out and he's spending like last night, he spent most of the time in the offensive zone. Mm-hmm. I thought he played one of his best games of the year last night. You know why? Cuz he didn't have to back check all night long. Yeah. He wasn't stuck in the defensive zone getting tired. He was, so you you shrink the shrink the rank for Joe Thornton. Make mm-hmm. it a hundred and forty foot rank as opposed to a two hundred foot rank. Mm-hmm. He's going to play better. Yeah. But guess who else is Hurdle and Couture. Mm-hmm. So the big three lead the way on D. That sets up the big three down the middle, mm-hmm. and that sets up everything else. And then we'll find out about the goaltending. I love that. So uh, the third key was uh, keep it simple. Sharks. That's the S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. keep it simple. Sharks. Kiss. Yeah. So uh, it's actually keep it simple. Stupid. I know, right? but <laughs> thanks, Jamie. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. thanks. Yeah. So now I, I did it. I, I already I did, did it. I fell into the, I felt like the most <laughs> obvious thing. They're like, and they they got me. <laughs> and I, I already, fell for it. I already did the fist. I'm way bump better that than line. that. I'm it's, way better than that. And I, we're not cutting this. We're not cutting this. Oh, I mean, so, don't 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 worry. Do you know how many coaches used to say this? Oh yeah. Like when I, you guys have it on a whiteboard. It's like this is this is like a trauma for me <laughs> seeing that on your yes. whiteboard. Yes. <laughs> you know, I played I can, on some I bad teams that said like, and, yeah. they, and they 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 emphasized the stupid on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, as well. so just so you know, yeah. So yeah. Well, I, I believe like from, uh, I already heard him say that you know playing the simple passes, the simple game is what's successful. So I'm already going to do the. Fist bump on that one too. I think we're three for three. Uh, Bakes, what do you say? Well, okay. No, let no. him finish. No, <laughs> no, no. The problem is, the. I know you want me to pat you on the back. Okay. <laughs> I know we a big the big kit. You know, hey. No, I want the real answer. Here's the thing. Yeah. I do myself. They. <laughs> they're they're similar keys. So the the, the keep it. Si- Keep it simple. Don't chase the game defense first. They all align, right? So I, I would add, your best players have to be the, the best players, mm-hmm. and then have I'd have that as one of them. Like I think the keep it simple is part of defense first. Strong starts. Don't chase the game. Yes. You, here's the thing. They're good keys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are, but they all they're all aligned under like defense first is it. If you have a defense first mentality, are you keeping the game simple? Yeah. Right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. As a guy that does keys, right. I would do I would you can do this like you can cuz they all align, but but I think they need I think they need the best players mm-hmm. to be the best players. We talked about that 2 like, weeks ago because Barkley Goudreau had more goals than 
Kocher and Meyer combined. Yeah. You need the best players to be the, like, and they have to play with a defense first mentality. Mm -hmm. And then then everyone else follows suit. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But they have to, like, that's not necessarily an automatic, because you're asking skilled guys. They revert, like, they've been skilled their whole life. They want, they all revert. So when I, so yeah. my whole thing, like, coaching at the youth level, playing, I used to have to try and shut these guys down. Like, skilled guys still want to make skilled plays. Yeah. So we used to, like, we're like, okay, they're, they're it's, we knew when we were getting them frustrated, because you know what a frustrated star tries to do? Everything. Too much. Yeah. Do you want to know what a frustrated grinder does? Less. Right? Mm. Grinds more. Yeah. Simplifies. He knows that's what got, that's his ticket. Mm. Right? That's why the superstars make the money mm. to make the plays. So they're going to keep trying. But sometimes they need to all maybe huddle up and say, you know, yeah. what wins championships? Still defense. I mean, even Washington for all the, uh, for yeah. Ovechkin, I mean, that team, they, they hunkered down defensively, they played physical. Mm-hmm. And then they were very, like, wow, they'd score some goals, but they, you know what I mean? Do you think a, uh, an incredibly highly skilled player like Eric Carlson can keep it simple? Because he seems to do things that are just incredible all the time. <coughs> and a lot of times it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. We've seen a lot of passes get picked off. But Well, um, look, don't th- confuse simple and playing good defense. Yeah. Like, you can be great defensively. You can not lose battles. You can be in good position mm-hmm. and still make these eye-popping plays. Yeah. You can also look at the, you know, you're like, okay, the team's lost three games in a row. I'm not going to try and wire one up the middle here four minutes into the game, <laughs> which is keeping it simple. Right. But that's also like recognizing that I'm on a, I'm not trying to make the great play. Yeah. I'm making sure that we don't chase the game. So feel- these are, first of all, they're great keys. I was I was bus- I was busting <laughs> yeah, your chops because yeah. it's 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 not hard right now when a team is struggling to find keys. Right, we could sit here like, yeah, when they're on a ten game win streak, you're like, just keep doing just what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like the only key. Right. right now, you're like, you could say, well, they got to do this better. I'm like, yeah, five on. You, if you said, oh, the five on five play's got to get better, I'm like, you know, right. But but seriously, five on five, which I don't even know if they won last night. But they're, they're I don't, I had, because I didn't look. Uh-huh. What was the final score? Of uh, last, four to two? It was four to two. Because they had an empty netter. And a shorthanded goal. Mm-hmm. They yeah. tied. Mm-hmm. They tied the five on five. Mm-hmm. So do you want to know what they've done this year in five on five? I'm scared. Should be. Okay. <laughs> the, they've won it twice. Five on five, even strength. Right. So like, who did they, like, like uh, Vancouver scored a goal six on five. That doesn't count. Right. But five on five even strength, the Sharks are had are the worst numbers in the NHL. They've won the five on five even strength battle twice. They're one on one. They've now tied it three times. They're three and zero, oh. and they've lost it eleven times. They're one and ten. So, yeah. like as a, I would I would put win the five on five in here. Mm-hmm. But that ties into still. But that's how do you win the five on five? Is defense first? Mm-hmm. I would. That's all. I'd either I'd take kiss out. Take out kiss. If you're doing defense first, to me, kiss is implied. Implied. Okay. If you're, if you're, to me, that's the that would be, and have either like add win the five on five yeah. or have your great player like, mm-hmm. which which is going to be implied. Things yeah, are going to be implied, but. Well, we're not taking over his job anytime soon. <laughs> well, that was why I did it. <laughs> Actually, they were great keys. I, just didn't, I didn't want to tell him that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, we're kind of at the end right. here, so I don't know if there was any last um, thing you wanted to promote or talk you about. You say or that. I, I wrote stuff down. You okay. Yeah. And and I, it's like a list. It's a list. So these are... I'll be getting more involved in... Um, well, it's mental health. Uh, I like to call it mental wellness mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that's where I want to help people go. Is Mental illness is... No, ill, mm-hmm. you get well. Like right. you're, oh, I have the flu, and I don't have the flu. Now I'm better, right? right? So mental health, there's a... So Headstrong, this is a huge initiative by NBC. Uh, it's coming out this week. They're going to have um, basically like a documentary. I know Clint, Mc, 
uh, Larchuk's on it, but uh, football players, mm -hmm. I don't know everybody. Um, there's gonna be some digital versions. Uh, I'm one of those. It's like a four minute thing, so it's mm -hmm. coming out. But it's gonna be, it's basically mental health and sports. So, and I'm really proud that NBC is doing this nice. and Good. that I work for them. Like right mm -hmm. now, like gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Don't hit the mic. <laughs> gratitude, <laughs> gratitude, gratitude, gratitude to work for the Sharks at NBC because, you know, ultimately those. Uh, I, I did some work with After the Impact Foundation. So they uh, this was Mike Dicka founded it. They work with, they've added kind of leaders too now. They did a, a partnership with Journey Pure. I went to an intensive wellness program this summer. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it was a test run. It was myself, an ex-NFL uh, quarterback, a Navy SEAL, and a guy that was like president of a company that was on the Dow Exchange. Nice. And uh, so it was kind of leaders, in their eyes, legends and heroes, and you know who battled in different ways. And it was, oh my gosh, it was uh, talk about iPod. It was four and a half, life changing for me. I was at a different stage than these guys, but the stuff that we did was phenomenal. And they partnered with Journey Pure, which is um, back east. They do a lot of stuff with addiction, but they're getting into mental health and stuff like that. They have treatment facilities, and it's they're all it's very similar treatments when you get into all this mm -hmm. and I, I'd like to throw a, a little nod out to one hit away uh, one one hit away dot org local basically education support and resources for uh, for brain healing from sports related injuries so I've talked to the people that uh, are part of this and and that and run it and uh, really cool organization so nice. foundation yeah sky's the limit foundation sky's the limit um, <clears throat> they work with basically it's a foundation that helps raise money for youth to go and it's 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 in collaboration with different wilderness therapy programs really cool yeah, that's nice. like you go away for yeah. three to months three months like whoa different places yeah and like you're out in the wilderness like you're like camping and and then the la uh, center for neuro skills um, my ex-wife Colleen she works there, but they help with TBI and stuff like that, traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. And the last one is CHC. I'm, I've done a little bit of work with them, chconline.org. They do education and mental health uh, services for children, teens, and young adults. They've been doing it for like 65 years. Wow. So these are, it's a lot. I'm not like necessarily, like, I'm out there to help as many as I can and, and promote because I think there's a lot of people hurting out there. Oh, yeah. And more than anything, if you're hurting or struggling anyway, please, 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 please go talk to somebody. There's gonna be someone that's gonna help care and you get a sliver of hope and you can turn a sliver of hope that I had this much and you can have the mental wellness that you never even thought you would ever have because you didn't even know it existed. I didn't even know. I didn't, for 15 to 20 years I coped and battled I didn't even know that this version of Jamie Baker could even be here. So thank you for having me. We radical gratitude. Absolutely. A little radical happy. gratitude. Very well. happy to have you here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to go out right now because that's, <laughs> what, what do you say? Yeah. I mean, radical really, gratitude. Yeah. What do you say? That's That radical was just amazing. Gratitude. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show, for sharing all of your experience and your knowledge and for patting us on the back with the three keys. <laughs> we do appreciate that too. Uh, so, and for putting Mark Smith up there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so um, I guess that's that's the end of episode 63 again. Yeah. It's so just so grateful, thank you so much. Um, and for super producer Jason and super key grip Joe, who's in the house over there Golf today. clap, golf clap. Golf clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're in a garage, <laughs> this is it. I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week, bye bye. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.